to the blood come the boys, oh. like sniffing dogs, oh. running and slobbering and trying to find out where that Stop. smell comes from, where the smell is. That smell. So here we have Mummy Dearest. Few things are more memorable about both Stephen King's book and Brian De Palma's film than the fanatic that is Margaret White. Our first impression of her is an eccentric that everyone avoids, and who somehow thought her pregnancy was a cancer of the womanly parts. Oh, cancer. Oh, oh. She's then spoken about by a former neighbour who reveals an incident where she tried to punish Carrie for talking to her while she was sunbathing, which led to rocks raining down on the house. <laughs> Margaret is a religious fanatic who has brought Carrie up under cruelty and fear, locking her in a closet when she feels like it. We are free! No! We are free, no! woman! She's the book's most prominent antagonist, and Carrie's character growth starts when she's able to use her powers to stand up to her. I'm going, Mama. After the prom incident, Margaret stabs Carrie in the shoulder in an attempt to kill her, but ends up getting her heart stopped telekinetically. You must renounce this power. You must give it up. You must never use it. Margaret's first actress, Piper Laurie, has an interesting relationship to the character. I didn't get it. And I was talking to my husband that evening, and I said, no, I... He said, well, you know, Brian De Palma has a comedic approach to just about everything he does. And I thought, oh, that's the secret. I didn't read it properly. So I reread it, and I thought, oh, this is a, a satire. So, yeah, she decided to play it like she was starring in the parody. Help the sinning woman see the sin of her days and ways. Show her that if she had remained sinless, the curse of blood would never have come on her. And nine times out of ten, that doesn't work. Here, however, the over-the-top performance fits the character so well that it's equal parts hilarious and terrifying. We slept in the same bed, but we never did. This version is the most outwardly psychotic, which is very true to the book, and it's the only portrayal that doesn't try to rationalise or sympathise with her. So while you could argue that this Margaret is pretty one-dimensional and crazy and abusive is all there is to her, it's by far the best incarnation. And the raven was called Sin. Sin. Margaret's reasons for being crazy in the book are mentioned as stemming from being traumatised by witnessing her grandmother's telekinesis as a child, and grief from her husband's sudden death before Carrie was even born, and the fact that she got pregnant when he raped her and she ended up liking it. And it took me. It took me. In the film, we know nothing about her family, and instead Carrie's father Ralph just left her for another woman. He ended your father and carried him off! He ran away, Mama. Which she is in denial about. The devil tempted him. He ran away with a woman, Mama. Everybody knows that. So again, she's technically one-dimensional, but that just serves to make her a more effective antagonist. After all you've been taught, everyone in bad, Mama, everything in the sin. Come to your closet and pray. Ask to be forgiven. She's an example of how a villain sometimes doesn't need a complex motive or justification for being evil and a gifted actor can do the work on their own. Now don't you know by now I can see inside you, I can see the sin as surely as God can. This film features a different death than the DIY heart attack of the book. <laughs> and Piper Laurie made this choice. <sighs> deciding to make it seem as though Margaret was happy to die. Whether it's because she's satisfied that she's killed her daughter, or she's just that excited to meet Jesus, it's all up to you. Piper Laurie also got an Oscar nomination for the role, which pretty much cements her as the definitive Margaret White. We'll pray. We'll pray. Any other actress that has to play her, their motivation is clearly don't be like Piper Laurie. I pray you find Jesus. So. I can see your sin as surely as God can. The 2002 film gives us Patricia Clarkson, the modern day Betty Davis, as some call her. Woe to the woman who makes garments with lustful purpose, for she is prideful and curses and rejects the Lord. Her performance is the complete opposite to Piper Laurie, which is a big surprise if you watch the two films back to back. Come to your closet and pray. Ask to be forgiven. Go to your closet and pray. No, Mama. Piper Laurie was over the top and almost operatic, while Patricia Clarkson is calm and reserved. In fact, most of the time she barely raises her voice. He said he would have me home by 11. No, no, no. She seems to be the most normal of the Margarets, or the least psychotic anyway, 
And the Lord visited Eve with a curse, and the curse was the curse of blood. Eve was weak, say it. It's a choice. The internet. This version gets to have debates with her daughter over different beliefs and faiths. Ezekiel chapter 13, read it for yourself. I'll read it later. Read it now. Margaret representing the conservative fire and brimstone of the Old Testament, and Carrie representing the more open and forgiving kindness of the New Testament. Jesus will help me. He will help me if I really need him. Not if he doesn't love you anymore. It seems like this Margaret has less power than Piper Laurie's. That Margaret kept Carrie in line with slapping and dragging. But this one seems like that sort of thing is only done rarely. I think this one's real pretty. It's godless. In most of her scenes with Carrie, she seems to be trying to reclaim power in a calmer way than her predecessor. Tell that boy you're not going or we're gonna move from here! You're not going and that's final. Mom, please sit down and talk with me! <laughs> she even tries to kill Carrie in a less psychotic way. Before she die. Before I wait. This one restores the book's death of telekinetic heart-stopping, but it follows the 1976 film by having this be the climax, instead of killing Billy and Chris last. Sin never dies. As she's still haunting Carrie in the end sequence, we can assume she may have made ghostly appearances in the TV series. Mother Mary, Mother Grace, protect me, guide me in my hour of death. 2013's Margaret is played by Julianne Moore, and they take the character in another radical new direction like Sue. Do you finish your prayers, little girl? As opposed to the one-dimensional yet terrifying antagonist of the book and first two films, this one is shown to sincerely love her daughter. I'll be okay, Mom. I'm gonna leave work early today. Pick you up after school. They take a few things from the musical as well. So I can't let her stop. We have a birth scene where Margaret prepares to kill the baby as she did in the book. I should have given you to God when you were born. And I was weak and backsliding. But as opposed to the weakness the book says she had, here it's more obviously done out of love. This creates an interesting dynamic between Carrie and Margaret, which also corresponds to the more optimistic personality they gave Carrie. I was worried sick. Come on, come inside. I'm sorry, I'm late. Let's get inside. If Margaret is sometimes nice and loving, Carrie holds out hope for her mother's better days. You're safe here with me. So in some ways, Carrie is the grounding influence that prevents her from getting worse. Even see this scene here. I don't want you to get hurt. Or you could just be happy for me. It almost feels like Julianne Moore is playing Margaret as almost wanting to be okay with her daughter going out with someone. I'm nervous enough as it is. This film also expands on a moment from the book where Margaret starts hurting herself to guilt Carrie out of going. Mama, stop it! <sighs> now self-harm is a big part of her character, and it makes the dynamic between them that bit more disturbing. I will not let that come down upon you. I will not. Lord, no. This Margaret in some ways feels like a grown-up version of Carrie from the 2002 film. Are any of those girls good? And like Piper Laurie, it's an unconventional choice in acting style, but ultimately comes across quite well. Until... Margaret gets the same death as the 1976 film in yet another studio mandate. Even though the character is now more sympathetic and even tragic. This devil's got her now. So the brutal and violent death Piper Laurie got isn't really warranted. <laughs> ah! Piper Laurie's Margaret was a psycho who deserved to be impaled multiple times. Julianne Moore's Margaret is a woman struggling with mental illness who just needs to be mercy killed before she can hurt anyone else. A MacGyver heart attack is fine without turning her into a pincushion, but anyway. I, I killed my mom. I want her back. It just goes to show that Margaret's portrayal is so heavily influenced by Piper Laurie, possibly even more so than Carrie is by Sissy Spacek. Boy. <laughs> the boys! The efforts by the other two actresses are solid in their own right, but are all very much in the shadow of the first. I like it! Like Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates, Christopher Reeve as Superman, Leonard Whiting as Romeo, and in my opinion, Sadie Frost as Dracula's Lucy, Piper Laurie is the definitive Margaret White, and she understood her character better than probably anyone else in the film, and without her, every other adaptation does feel a little bit lacking. I'm here on the Lord's work, Mrs. Snell. 
spread the gospel of God's salvation through Christ's blood. Yes, of course.